um, like to go over these uh, tags in your driver door. The door jam has all these uh, data tags that specify weight ratings, tire pressure ratings, mostly on this one. Um, and it says tire pressure is going to be 61 in all of the tires. Um, and VIN number, manufacture date, and just numbers in general. So um, just good to check your tire pressure, 61 PSI and all of them before you go on a trip. Okay. Um, I'll go over the cockpit area. Last thing, actually, after I go over the inside, the house side, basically, we'll go in the cockpit and that'll be the last. Okay. First compartment is propane. It's unlocked, or it is not lockable by law. In case of a fire due to gas, number one, you exit the unit, get everybody out. Number two, you want to come out here and exterminate the source. So you close the valve all the way to turn off the gas. If you want to use a gas appliance like your furnace, water heater, um, go ahead and turn the valve all the way open to the left until you can't turn it. You have a visible gauge here that's wired to the monitor panel inside so you can see the level of gas here as well as at the monitor panel inside. So really just looking at the level and opening and closing a valve here. Other than that, there's just a couple of pertinences for the propane guy to fill your tank. Uh, some gas stations, most travel stations, U-Hauls, you can just do a search and find where you can get LP. But yeah, that's your propane. I'll leave it on so we can just use gas appliances for the walkthrough. Okay. Got these keys here. You got a key fob for ignition. It is wireless ignition. Um, a couple entry door keys. The round one is the door handle. The square one is the uh, deadbolt. That, those are both the entry door. And then you got a couple compartment door keys. Um, all the lower compartments are going to be this purple square key. Just turn it like that to a 90. Locks the door. You just turn it back and unlocks it. Okay. This is your sewer outlet. This is where we dump our gray and black tanks. You have two holding tanks. The gray tank is going to be holding your shower and sink water. The black tank is going to be holding your toilet water. Toilet water is obviously dirty, so um, when you go to dump it, you'll have to have a hose. It doesn't come with one, unfortunately. You'll have to buy one. You attach the hose here, attach it in the ground, wherever your dump station or your campground should have you know, one at your site in just a dump station. Um, you attach those there and then the ground and pull the black first because it's dirtier. And once the black's completely empty, you close it and then open the cleaner gray and use that to rinse out the black water. And then once that's empty, you close that, take your hose off, store it in here or whatever compartment you want. And uh, that's it, that's how you dump your tanks, that's it. And then we got a little light up here. Well, there's a switch to turn on the lights inside. I'll, uh, that. Um, I'll do that so I show you the lights on the other side, but uh, yeah. It's just a compartment for your holding tanks, essentially. Go ahead and lock everything as we go. That is not a compartment, that's just a panel. This is your water bay. This is where fresh water goes in and you have your outside shower in here. Um, yeah, just water stuff basically. Um, this very top inlet is not where you uh, fill your fresh tank or get city water. It's actually a black tank flush. Your black tank's your toilet water. Obviously, you want to rinse it out to keep it clean, deodorized, so the sensors stay clean. You can actually accurately read it. Um, they actually have chemical you can pour down the toilet too for the black tank and use that to mix it with water and keep it in there a day or two and then flush it out, and that's how you maintain your black tank. Um, so do that at least once or twice a year, at least once before you put it in storage, so when you pull it out of storage and you use it, it's nice and clean. Um, the water inlet below it, that doesn't say Santee Flush, this one is your water inlet that you, A, get city water in, which is just direct pressure to your sinks and shower, or uh, fill your fresh tank. So city is just direct pressure, dry actually means filling your fresh tank. Dry camping is, uh, when you don't have a source of water to hook up with a hose for city water, you fill up your fresh tank and that's your mobile supply of water. It's like 40 gallons of water. You can just take anywhere you want and use your water pump, which is right here, to supply you with water inside from the fresh tank. Okay. Um, pump switch is right here and there's another pump switch inside I'll show you on the touch screen. 
panel. You can turn it on there, you can turn it on in there, it doesn't matter. There's just two ways to turn on the water pump. Um, outside shower, pretty self-explanatory, just hot and cold valve, shower head with the shut off. Just clean yourself out here. A couple drains below that. This one that is open right now is the fresh tank drain. So you fill the fresh tank here with the valve on dry, you drain the fresh tank there. It is drained now because we are winterized. I was told to de-winterize it before we deliver it to you, but we keep it winterized while it's on our lot, while it's freezing cold. So that's a fresh tank drain. This is, these are the two low point drains. These two valves back here are actually draining uh, the entire water system, the plumbing to the sink, shower, toilet, everything. Hot is on the left here, it's red. Blue is uh, cold on the right. So whenever you store it and don't want water in it, or you want to get all the water out before you pump antifreeze to winterize it, tapping out of these two low points, okay? So those are your drains. Water filter housing is here. You got a wrench that slips on from the bottom, and you basically just turn to the left like that and loosen it off the housing, and then, you know, got filters you can put in there. Um, I think they go every like year or so but you know it depends on the usage but yeah you have an option for a filter there isn't one in there now so yeah other than that could be storage not that much room for it um but yeah you know whatever you want to put in here whatever it would fit so yeah that's your water bay the bay next to the water bay is your shore cord bay this is your shore cord giving you 110 power, um, primarily to charge the uh, 12 volt batteries. That is the main function of plugging your coach in with the shore cord. Um, that is a transfer switch. Um, so for the generator. So if you were to uh, turn on the generator while you were plugged into shore power, it would automatically switch over to the generator and then start using generator power and then when they turn off the generator it would switch back to shore power so that's just happening on its own without you touching anything generator and shore power is the same kind of power you're powering your uh, microwave air conditioner you know fridge 110 these are your 110 appliances um yeah so as often as you can keep this plugged in at your campsite or you, if you could be in your driveway at home um it'll look like an outlet like this um this is your cord right here, this gray one, and it plugs into an outlet like this. 30 amp outlet. So, you know, most campsites have 30 and 50 amp, uh, amp sites available. Um, if maybe they're out of 30 amp sites, you would just have to get a 50 amp adapter, um, which would look like plug into an outlet like that. That's 50 amp, so might need an adapter or to step down to a normal residential outlet like that just for your house if you're in your driveway so there's ways to plug your cord in if you don't have a 30 amp outlet available you can get adapters so um you also need to get a regulator for the water inlet sometimes water pressure is really high i forgot to mention that um some campgrounds have really high water pressure and can break your plumbing apart if you have a regulator that saves your water system from high pressure water so you'll need a sewer hose You'll need a water pressure regulator and maybe a couple adapters for your shore cord. It's pretty the, much the biggest things you might need to buy, but other than that, it's all whatever you want. Okay, I'll leave it plugged in. <laughs> oh, there's a compartment up here. It's actually a pass through. There's a door on the other side to access the same compartment. Um, and this is underneath the bed in the rear. This is actually also accessible by lifting up the bed panels. Okay? So, just storage. Go ahead and close and lock this. This doesn't use the square key. This one is the metal key. And it locks like that. Okay? Back here we have your fresh tank water fill. It's a, a gravity fill, not the water inlet with a valve. This is where you could just stick in the end of a water hose, turn it on and fill your fresh tank that easily. Um, I forgot to mention this as well earlier when hooking up water to either fill your tank or get city water, but I uh, don't recommend using a green garden hose because of the rubber lining inside. It can contaminate the water, especially for a, a tank of water. 
just holding water over a period of time, it can smell and taste weird. But if you get a white or blue drinking water hose, like this one, it's connected to a white one too. They're both drinking water hoses. That's what I recommend hooking up water to your RV with. So that's clean, you know, good smelling water. Um, yeah, so fill the fresh tank here, down at the water inlet with the, the valve. Either way, fills your fresh tank. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever's convenient for you. Um, don't need a regulator for that as much as city water, you know, so Other than that we got a hitch down here if you wanted to tow something behind you like a dolly bike rack something um, It is rated for 5,000 pounds of trailer weight and 500 pounds of tongue weight So you can actually tow quite a bit with this seven-way plug there receiver two inch Just a hitch um, yeah, and well, then I just got a backup camera up there that automatically comes on when you put it in reverse, so it's a nice feature of the coach. Um, this is your a storage compartment and, oh, it's actually passed through too, it's the same compartment on the other side, you can put like long things like skis or fishing poles in here, but uh, this is your LP connection for uh, an LP grill that uses this style of hose. Basically, it's like an air hose where you slide this coupler back. With the valve on, it's locked. With the valve off, it's unlocked. So you have to have the shutoff valve like that, and then you can slide the hose on, couple it, turn it on, and then have your grill. You know, so it's totally an optional thing. It doesn't come with the grill. You'll just need to get one. Usually, they're just called RV grills but just make sure it has the flexible hose or has that fitting for it. So you can hook up one like that. Other than that, it's just storage, you know. So I'll go ahead and close and lock this. This door up here is the same as on the other side, but there it is, I'm just showing you. Yep. Furnace and water heater is, you know, essentially your space heater. You turn on your furnace, hot air is going to come out of the here and get your exhaust really hot. Be careful not to touch it. Thermostat's inside. I'll show you how to turn it on when we get in there, but it's just your furnace. This is your water heater. It is an instantaneous tankless water heater that doesn't have a reservoir of water that it heats up. It actually has water lines that wrap around a heating chamber to heat it just like that. Um, we'll actually only heat water when it's, when water's demanded, only when hot water is uh, being ran to the shower, sink, wherever. Um, this is the primary power switch. The only way to turn it on is to have this switch out here on. It doesn't matter if you have it down or up. For some weird reason, they have it two different ways, but either way, it turns it on. The main thing is, is have it on out here, then there's a switch inside to turn it on um, and I'll go a little more into that when we get to the switch inside other than that you know you're seeing that it heats here this is the drain um, this little lever flips up and this is a tray basically that flips down and a, a strainer comes out and that's how you would drain out the water um, before pumping antifreeze through it to winterize it so um, that's just all you're doing basically. There's a couple valves inside to bypass it too, but um, only for if we were blowing air through it. Not something you have to do when you winterize it, but if you do, it's so you don't run air through here, you just run air you know, through the lines past it to actually blow out the hot water lines past it, and then um, you unbypass it um, and run antifreeze through it. You want antifreeze through the water heater to winterize it, so. When we get inside, I'll show you where the valves are and the switch to turn it on. That's your water heater. Gas only. It uses battery power, but it is gas only. So the only way it heats water is propane. Um, it's like your furnace. Battery powered, but just uses gas. That's your generator. 
Okay, it's a diesel generator. It's using the gas the engine does. Um, there's an alternate power source to using the cord. Um, if you were out somewhere where you didn't have an outlet to plug the cord into, this is saving you from not being able to use your air conditioner. Um, you know, maybe your microwave, you know, just like 110 appliances like that. You do have an inverter um, that will power your electronics, your TVs and your refrigerator. Um, that solely uses 12 volt power. Inverter basically inverts 12 volt to become 110 power like the generator short cord, but it's draining the batteries. That's why it only supplies power to the fridge and TVs because they don't draw that much power. But um, you have this, it uses gas, but you know, better than an inverter sucking down batteries. Um, so yeah, uh, on off switch is inside. I don't see one out here. I see an oil dipstick or the oil fill is here and the oil dipstick is here, these two little red things. This is a breaker. Um, with it pushed in, it's on, and with it pushed out, it's off. Um, if you are running the generator and not getting power, this is probably the first thing you should check, if not a breaker inside. There's a 110 breaker panel, but... Yep. Basically, that's all you would really need to come out here and look at. Oil, or if that breaker's on. Okay, so that's pretty much it about your generator. It's only been run for about 30, 40 hours. I recommend getting it serviced the first 150 and then every 100 hours after that. Change the oil, air filter. It should be an oil filter too. But I'm sure you wouldn't actually be doing the service yourself, probably Onan or some RV technician. But either way, it's your generator. Moving on up here, um, this is your outside TV, little metal key. Locks it. Oh, it is unlocked. So they're all LG TVs. Got the remote out here. I have them all programmed to Denver channels. You have a rooftop antenna. I take care of it. Who teaches you know, the Watch local channels wherever you are. So. Um, also a DVD player. So watch movies like that. It's connected with all the TVs. Um, yeah, it's just an outside TV. Um, down here, storage and your inverter is down here as well. Um, you can turn it on and switch inside, and there's actually a switch on here, but this is more or less just, you know, for a technician to access it, you know, you can press the switch on here, it's just a little less convenient than just the switch inside that's eye level, but this is your inverter. This is what's taking battery power to make it 110 power like your short cord or uh, generator. It's only powering the fridge and TVs, nothing else. Okay, so that's it, your inverter. Other than that, it's storage and you got a light here. Um, the cargo light switches on the switch panel here. I'll show you when I get to it. That's how you turn on the lights. They are motion sensed. The switch is a one if you want that constantly on, or if you put it on two, it'll be motion sensed. So it'll turn off when the door's closed, turn it on when the door's open. So however you want to do it. Okay, so that's basically all your compartments. 